Hello, we're back. And we've got a couple of routers for you. So this is the new Ubiquiti router. By the way, I've already had it apart. Um, this is the AirCube. And uh, see here, this is the Air router, which we are all used to and good stuff. Uh, so I'm going to start off by showing you guys the internals on these bad boys and the differences that they're in. And then I think we will go across and take a look at the software aspect of these radios, or devices, access points, whatever the hell you want to call them. Okay. <clears throat> so first things first, let us uh, push that out of frame. Okay, so here's the first one. Um, so to get these guys open, by the way, in case you ever have to repair them or whatnot, um, once again, I do not advise that you try to flash something on here that did not come from Ubiquiti. Because um, these guys are, well, they, they, they kind of work good as they are. And just, just leave them as they are. All right, so anyway, the first thing you need to do is pop the bottom off. All right. Um, the way that you do that is you need to get in there with a spudger. Um, you can either use a spatula. Spatula works great. Or where is my mighty spudger? Oh, there it is. It's hiding in behind. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to need these anyway. There's my spudger. The opening tools. Yes. Okay, so cool. All right, so basically when you go to get these guys out, um, there's a trick to it. So you see these three dots here? Well, there's three dots there too, and they stop you from getting any tools in there. Um, so when this guy's down, and you're looking at it like this, up by the air cube, that's where you can get in. You get in here like this, you pop it up, and then you gotta push down and you gotta pop it up. These have a little bit of hot snot on them. See, there's just a little bit of hot glue on there to hold it in. Yeah, move my rig back a little bit. There we go. Okay. So once you get that open, there are four clips on these guys. There's a this is your sleeve that holds everything. And there's a clip here, clip here, clip here, clip here. This track here is a misleading little thing as you can see by all the bite marks. Um, to get into this, that's actually the seam down here. We gotta get in here like this, get in here like this, and then, there, okay. That's all there is to it. So, as you can see, this is a fairly large container just for such a tiny little radio, but because it's a cube, it's cool, right? All right, here is what we're looking at. All right. So first of all, there's your whole circuit board, okay? Reset buttons on the bottom, there's some stuff there. Uh, these are great because they've got four ports. You've got your 24 volt PoE in, you've got your 24 volt PoE out, which is your WAN. Um, the recommendation for you guys, what we've been doing is we aren't using those ports. That will not power radio properly. Um, we're using a one amp 24 volt PoE in on here, and then we're taking the LAN port of that PoE and connecting it to a power line kit so we can stick little power line extenders throughout the house. This one's going into the CPE, and then these two ports there are just for whatever the customer wants. Okay, so right here, let's see here, that is a Qualcomm Atheros QCA 9533-BL3A. That is the processor, that's the end all be all. It kinda does everything for this little guy. Um, let me see, it looks like, I haven't actually taken this circuit board off but it looks like somebody else has. So those screws are just stripped. So let's uh, let's grab a little tiny screwdriver here. They are so stripped. Oh my, I can't even take them out. Somebody has been in here prior to me and um, worked the circuit board's magic. So um, yeah, but anyway, these are the main guts. There's your hard drive, there's your everything else. Right there is your RF circuitry, whatever. That's that. As you can see. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Let's take a closer look at this. There you go, guys. Pretty cool, no? So there's that. All right, so that's the inner guts of these guys. Um, now let me just uh, give me two seconds here, and I'm going to um, look this chip up for you, and I'll give you some specs on it. Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, I just pulled up the spec sheet on the processor here. 
a little bit. But yeah, don't worry, I'm still getting the lighting worked out. Videos will get better as we go on because I'm actually doing them now, but right there. So this guy here, uh, the specs on it are as follows. Uh, let's see here. Wi-Fi standards, 802.11n, ABG, peak speed, 300 megabits per second. Channel utilization, 20 by 40, MIMO 2 by 2, two stream. Uh, let's see here, Ethernet, 10100 only. USB 2.0, CPU is actually 650 megahertz at peak. Uh, memory speed is 300 or 200 mega, uh, megahertz. DDR1, DDR2. Uh, as far as supported interfaces go, it's got UART, which is your serial. And I believe they're right there. Let's see here. These guys right here are your interface pins. So let me see here. This one looks like... Um, this one looks like uh, a JTAG. And this one here looks like your TTL. Okay. Now let's see what else this thing has. Um, USB 2.0, SPI, JTAG, PCI, Express 1.1. Uh, it's got 17 GPIOs, and it is a DRQFN package. Great. Cool, eh? All right, so that's that one. <clears throat> that is that one. All right, so that's the air cube. So let's put the air cube aside now. We've got that uh, thing apart. And let me just get this uh, air router. And by the way, the air cube... Uh, we've just started using them and testing them out, and so far they look okay. They don't seem to be causing any problems. Um, they're definitely a huge improvement on these old air routers, which are just CISO. And that is gross. Okay, so here, two screws, got it open. This is what you've got inside. Uh, it may look like it's actually MIMO. It is not MIMO. That's a diversity antenna. Okay, that's a diversity antenna kit. Okay, so looking in here, here's your memory right there. Uh, this here, let's get that off. That is your CPU, APU, whatever the hell you want to call it. And this one is an Atheros AR7241-AH1A. So that guy is. So let's look that up. Okay, I found the data sheet for this little bad boy right here. So let's read it out. Okay, so integrated MIPS 24K 32-bit processor operating at up to 400, uh, 400 megahertz. 64K instruction cache is 32K data cache. Integrated Ethernet switch with 410.100.802.3 Ethernet LAN ports and one WAN port. 16-bit uh, DDR1 or DDR2 memory, so big difference already so far, right? Uh, supports up to 400 megabits uh, transfers per second. Uh, external serial memory, uh, interface, maximum of 16 megabytes. One USB 2.0 controller with built-in Mac physical support. High-speed UART and multiple GPIO pins for general-purpose I.O., LED, blah, blah, blah. Single lane PCI Express 1.1 interface. Um, let's see here. Uh, 802.11n uh, radio, JTAG port for processor control. She's in the Legion um, headquarters. So let's see here. So yeah, just from what you can see when you log into these guys, they are only CISO. Uh, which means the most speed you can ever get out of them in the best conditions is probably about 75 megabits per second. All right, so in here we've got another chip. We have the Atheros AR. Let's see here, where is my magnifier? Where is my magnifier? All right, let's see here. So this is the Atheros AR9285-AL1A. And that is the, that's the little buddy, basically. That's, uh, I think that these two are supposed to be sold as a kit. Let me just see here. Um, yes, a single lane PCI Express 1.1 interface that can be used for interfacing to the AR9287 single chip 802.11N Mac radio. Okay, so that's what that is. That little chip there is, that's your Wi-Fi chip. This is just your everything else. Uh, now let's look that chip up for a second quickly. All right, here we go. I got the chip specs up. So that little Wi-Fi chip there, which is crap. Uh, let's see here. 802.bg and N. Uh, 2.4 gigahertz. It says 300 megabits per second, but I've never seen these on here. Um, let's see here. Sports all sorts of different standards, blah, blah, blah. Now is it going to say whether it's MIMO or CISO? It does not but it does claim it'll do up to 300 megabits per second, which I don't think you'll see because 
this is usually oh, in a CISO uh, oh configuration. Um, so yeah, that's that's the teardown uh, of these oh, bad yeah, boys here anyway. Um, you can see a huge difference in uh, designs, right? Different memory tech. Let's put them both side by side here. Yeah, better chips, just, just more power, kind of better capabilities, just, yeah, just all around better. This thing is actually spec'd out way better than this thing, okay? Um, yeah, so that's the actual physical portion of the video. Uh, the next uh, part of the video, I'm going to do a screen capture and log into these guys and show you the benefits of this one and the shortcomings of this one. Um, yeah, so uh, that's pretty much that. Yeah, okay. Jump cut to OBS. Bwah. So anyway, <clears throat> enough rambling. Let's look at the um, air router and the air cube. The air router, old faithful that we've been using for a long time and know and love. And then the air cube, which is the new kid on the block, which is a little different and we're always unsure about new things. So let's, let's do upgrade. Let's do an upgrade while we're waiting. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the air router. Uh, I'm running 6.17 on here, and latest firmware, which is great. It's got all sorts of neat features, like uh, it'll actually pull its own firmware from Ubiquiti's website um, automatically, so you don't have to download it and upload it into the router. Great firmware, yes. Let's see if we're going to get out of beta. Okay, <clears throat> the new software does use up a bit more CPU and memory. Um, that's because they've added some new features, like UNMS compa uh, capability, a uh, little CPU meter, memory meter, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see here. That's standard 2.4, right? 100 megabit per second stuff on it. It's got most of the stuff that a regular router has. Shows you what stations are connected to the wireless. Uh, shows you your interface stats, what's connected to it, which realistically there's technically only three interfaces. Your WLAN 0, which is your wireless. LAN 1, which is the internal LAN switch. And LAN 0, which is the WAN interface, the gray port on the back. And then, of course, we got our bridge right here. Um, you can also see the MTUs on here, blah, blah, blah. DHCP clients. If I was running this thing um, as a uh, an actual router, then you'd actually be able to see DHCP server as well, and then I'll show you what's connected to it. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so DHCP client. When you click on DHCP client, this will show you what IP settings it's actually pulled from the router that it's connected to, or the network that it's connected to. ARP table, really handy. Just shows you what it sees directly nearby. Um, clearly what it's seeing right here is, uh, let's see here, 22, that would be my computer right here, uh, and then that's our router right there. Okay, bridge table. Bridge tables are handy, because it, it, it can actually map a network for you. Alright, bridge table. Here we go, bridge table's handy. Uh, it just shows you all the MAC addresses of the devices that are uh, connected close to it. We got our routes right here, which shows you, yeah, your routing information, and then your log. Just standard logging stuff, okay? Going over to the wireless tab now. Or should I? No, let's let's look at a couple more things right here. Alright, so here's all your interface information. Uh, your MAC addresses, blah, blah, blah. Transmit power. And antenna it's using, as you can see, one by one MIMO. Yeah. The chip itself is capable of so much more, but it's totally limited by software and uh, the actual board design that Ubiquiti used. No big deal. All right, so 20 megahertz, we always use that, of course, because uh, most devices will recognize 20 megahertz, where a lot of devices won't recognize 40 megahertz. For, so for compatibility, it's always best to use 20. Uh, AirMax clearly is disabled, because this is an AirOS. This device actually has the same capabilities as a nano station. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, you guys know the rest of the stuff here. So um, let's see, you're going to the wireless tab. you got your... Wireless mode, access point, station, AP repeater. Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. Alright, and something which I noticed is missing, actually, is that you used to be able to actually run these things as an access point and enable AirMax. Um, I'm not seeing that feature anymore. Uh, you, used to, you used to be able to see it right here, but it's gone. Alright, so here's all your um, different for information, basically. Uh, WPA shared key, and that's where you put your password. Uh, there's your modulation rate, blah, blah, blah. There's your antenna. Pathetic. Um, okay, extension channel. You guys know all this stuff. This is where you put your SSID for your wireless network. And this is where you can choose your country. 
And, uh, because it is North American, these are the only countries that it's allowed to use. That's kind of weird. Look, a glitch. Now, if I go to Network, you can see your network settings. Router, that actually sets it up as a eh, standard router. Okay, so whole router is your home router. So if you set it up in router mode, that's what that's going to do is that's actually going to take your um, uh, WAN interface, which will actually be your wireless interface. Okay. And then, uh, ugh, back it up. Okay, so bridge mode, that's what this guy's set up for right now. That just makes it into an AP, basically. Soho router mode just makes it into a, you know, a regular home router. Okay, so that turns the Wi-Fi interface into, uh, or it bridges it with the LAN ports, and then it uses LAN 0 as your WAN interface. Router mode, that sets it up like a nano station. So your wireless interface is considered your WAN interface, and then all your Ethernet ports are bridged together. That's basically that part, okay? Oh, and look, we've got IPv6 support. Isn't that great? Who uses IPv6? Let me know. Okay, advanced. The usual stuff, right? Services. You guys should know most of this stuff. We've got uh, CDP discovery, blah, blah, blah. Uh, syslog, remote log, all the regular stuff that you'll find in an out station. And then under system, just your identifying factors and whatnot. Now, a couple of neat little points here. Did you know that you can take an air router and connect it to any uh, Air Max enabled 2.4 gig AP? So that means that if you're using a uh, Rocket M2 on an Omni, and this thing's within range, you can actually connect it as a client device. And you can use this thing to actually connect the house. Uh, kind of a cool feature. Um, that's one of them, anyway. All right, so that's that. So, oh, yes, sorry, I almost forgot. You can actually connect this to UNMS now with uh, the 617 update. So that's kind of handy. Now, going over to the AirCube. Let's see here. Ah, let me log in. Log it into the AirCube. There we go. It has a quick timeout. So now, this guy is updated, and it's no longer beta. Oh, my God, we actually have, like... Uh, Full legitimate software. That's pretty cool. All right, so this is the interface that you see when you log into the AirCube. Um, as you can see, it is the newer uh, style that Ubiquiti is going for. Of course, UNMS. All right, so this thing. Uh, one of the major differences you'll find between the um, Air Router and the AirCube is that this is true MIMO. That means when you go to connect to it with a laptop or whatnot, you're going to be able to actually get 133 or 300 megabits per second across it. Okay. Um, so, a significant improvement, and as I discussed earlier, the CPU in it's far more powerful, it's got more memory, it's just, it's just a better device, okay? So let's get used to it. Alright, so here's the dashboard, this is what you get to see, the clients will show up in here, kind of cool. Uh, let's see here, wireless. So we've got, we've got it a little bit simplified, things have changed quite a bit in this, okay? Um, so you've got your... Well, you can turn the radio on and off very simply. It's a little bit used, more user-friendly, I guess you could say. Uh, SSID, we all know what that's for. Uh, now, some little bug that I noticed. If you set it for Auto 2040, it seems to actually tip the radio over to 40 if something's using 40. But it's not like other routers like Asus or Belkin where if you've got Auto 2040 and something's using 40 megahertz, 20 megahertz devices can still connect. No. What I've noticed is that if you've got it set for 2040 and a 40 megahertz device connects to it, 20 me megahertz devices will not be able to see this radio anymore. It's kind of funky. Okay, network. As you can see, simplified. We can either set it up as a router, which gives you all your neat little features here, and VLAN, which is really handy now that we've got that. Um, although I do believe that that's present in the air router. If we go to network, let's see here. Yeah, you can do management VLAN on here too. So, yeah, that's still a similar feature. Management VLAN, port-based VLANs, that's new though. Uh, I don't think you were able to do this one on the air router unless you went into SSH. Okay, static routing, port forwards. Yeah, so it's just, it's laid out a little bit differently. UPnP, of course, we always want on. Um, this one's in bridge mode right now because I'm just working on it to show you guys what's going on. Now, over to system. Let's see what we've got here in system. Again, simplified. This is kind of cool here. You can actually set up um, the LED on the bottom to turn off at uh, a certain time and come back on at a certain time. So you can set it up so at night, the LEDs on it turn off. You can't see it. It's great. 
or you can just turn it off completely, which is kind of cool. But then you don't know if it's working or not. Reset button, turn it off. PoE pass through. You want to turn that on. I don't believe it's on by default. You need that on if you're going to connect the CPE to it to run it. This is a cool feature which I wish was present in Air Control. Check beta firmware, because I don't like using beta firmware. Okay, connect to UNMS. Simple. Turn it on. Put your UNMS key in it, and it shows up in UNMS. I will be doing a video about UNMS and Air Control. Um, eh, you're going to like them. So, yeah, these are all your general features. So, eh, this is pretty much just a little bit cleaner than the previous interface, and but it has pretty much the same features. It's got some new features. It's lacking a couple of features, uh, like with this one, the air cube can only be a um, uh, an AP, so the air cube can't actually connect as a CPE to something. It, this is just strictly a home router, whereas the air router you can actually connect it to a 2.4 gig um, uh, Air Max. AP and use it as a client device. Eh, that's pretty much one of the biggest differences, really. And of course, this is one by one MIMO, and this is true two by two MIMO. So I mean, like, you might as well start switching over to the AirCube. Hopefully, with the uh, new firmware, things are all sorted out and working great with everybody. Um, yeah, that's really all there is to it. I, I don't think there's anything else I should I need to cover. But if I missed anything thing or you guys want to know some more details about something leave it in the comments and uh, I will review them and then I'll revisit this and I can go over extra features and stuff that you want to know okay but yeah for the most part there it is something which uh, I also wanted to do is I wanted to sh see how much current this guy draws um, so right now it's idle and let's see here. Okay, so this guy's idle right now so what I've done is I've actually got this, uh, I don't know if you can see this. <clears throat> okay, so this blue and red lead are going up to my bench power supply, which is set for 5 volts. And um, that is coming down to my little voltage slash current meter here, which I cobbled together, which works great. And then that's plugged into this uh, Microtech PoE, which then goes over to here. Alright, so I'm going to plug this into my bench switch. And right now, let's zoom in. Yeah, because that's 200 milliamps right there. Okay, so let's just see something here. All right, so I'm going to log into that bad boy. <laughs> let's okay, see Josh. how the voltage increases, or the current increases. Okay, so I'm logging into this right now, which should put a load on the CPU. All right. Okay, I have logged into it. So now, let's see here, we're using 0.4 amps, okay? Oh well, either way, I'm logged into the web interface and you can see that it's using about twice the power. Let me try connecting to it with a laptop. Okay, so now we're connected to the Wi-Fi and we're still at 0.4 amps there. So now I'm gonna do a speedtest.net and see how much power I can force this guy to do. All right, I'm running speedtest.net right now. So that should push this thing to work a little bit harder. All right, so by the way, uh, doing a speed test right now, I'm getting roughly 20 down by 20 down by 30 up. So that seems to be the capability of this bad boy, and you can really hear her screaming. All right, so it looks like about uh, the most this thing's going to use. That's about 0.4 amps at 5.5 volts, so that would be... 2.5 watts, roughly. Um, so this guy is using 2.5 watts. Yeah, that's not much. Okay, now let's do a quick power test on the... Let's zoom out for a second. Okay, so now let's do a uh, power test on an air router. Okay, so I won't need this now. Bench power supply is already set for 5 volts. Let's plug it in and see how much current it draws. I'm going to plug this into the network. Alright, there we go. Now let's zoom in and see how much current... Wow. These things are power hungry. So that's, that's pulling 5.4 volts at 0.8 amps. That's almost twice the power. There we go. So we got our air router plugged in. It is pulling point... What is that? 0.5 amps at... 
5.4 volts. Let's put this into the... There we go. We'll plug it into the network. Now let me do the same test. I'm going to log into it right now. Okay, I'm just setting the Wi-Fi up on this bad boy. So I'm actually logged into the air router right now. And we are using 0.5. Alright, so now I'm rebooting it. So it should be using all the CPU it's got right now. I just changed the Wi-Fi settings on it. As you can see, still 0.7 amps, 0.8. She's like a back of bit of juice. Alright, so that should be just about rebooted. Okay. And let's connect to it. Okay, I'm running speedtest.net right now. And let's see what our power consumption is. Oh, we're going to 0.7 amps. Now, the speed test, we got 23 by 20. So these guys are performing about the same then. All right, cool. All right, so there's the power. There's the uh, power tests on these guys then. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you feel to do so. Have a good one.